What's up everyone? Today we're going to continue talking about Azure Function Apps and how you can deploy them through CI CD pipelines from a centralized Git repository out to your Function App in Azure. This is a great way to collaborate with other people who might be writing your Function Apps with you and then also keeping a centralized golden copy basically out in a repository. That's also a good thing just so the code isn't lost or anything like that. In this example, we're going to go through Azure DevOps pipelines and how it works with those. I did try to get this to work with GitHub Actions and everything. I kept running into one issue. If I get that resolved, I'll probably do a follow-up video. Anyway, this is Jeff. You're watching Jeff Brown Tech. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we are back out in our Visual Studio code, and I want to just give a couple of updates that might be different from the previous videos we've been watching. I do have a local folder with the name of my repository called JPT Funk Social, you know, for Function App, and these are containing code for functions that I'm going to be using in automation to post things out to social media, the first one being Blue Sky. I have my two functions here. One is to create a post with a link, and then another one is just a text post. We have all of our other supported files here, our host.json, our local one here for testing locally. We've gone over that, our profile and our requirements. Those are you know, our core function app files and folders that we're working with there. And of course, if I go into one of these, we have our function, our run, and then when you create it out in Visual Studio, it just gives you the sample data file that's really not needed, honestly. Okay, and so the two things I want to go over that are new are these YAML files here. We have one called Azure Pipelines Deploy and Azure Pipelines Build Validation. When I've written pipelines in the past, I've usually had them in one file and then had conditions in each one. So when you create a pull request, it'll run these parts. And then if it's merging into main, you're completing that pull request, it will do it uh, at other parts of the pipeline. I was experimenting here with separating them out because I'd never done that before. And I just wanted to test and see what that process looked like. And it's working out pretty well, I think, and I like it a lot. So it's probably something I'll do in the future. First, let's talk about pipelines in general. It will just be a quick overview. What pipelines will do is they take your application code, they can run tests, they'll package it up, and then deploy it out to whatever service it needs to be. In this case, in our first pipeline here called build validation, the things I'm going to be doing in here is just doing a quick test out on my script files to see if they're following best practices and if they have any issues with them. Let's go through some of the components inside of this pipeline here. The first part of it is a trigger. So we are triggering on pull requests or PRs, and those are going to be PRs against the main branch of our repository. I do also have triggers set to none because I don't want this to trigger in any other way. It's only going to be for pull requests. The pull here in the image is just where do you want this to run? I'm running it on Ubuntu because, hey, we can run PowerShell type things on Linux now. We do have stages. I do just have the one stage for testing code, and I'm running the PowerShell script analyzer. It's automatically included in these images here, so you don't have to download and install that module or anything. And then my first step here is a task for running PowerShell and the inputs here is just an inline script. And I'm going through and getting all the child items in my build.sources directory. This is the root folder of the repository after it checks it out. And I'm finding just my run.ps1 files. Those are the, you know, the files that are running our function app code. And then for each one, I'm invoking script analyzer against it. I'm only concerned with warning or error severities. And then if any of those results come out, meaning there's something wrong with the script or something I could be doing better with it, we'll output that out. And then if that happens, we're going to exit one saying that it failed. Again, the idea with just this first build validation is you're testing the code. You're making sure it can build. If this was a compiled language, like C Sharp or .NET, you'd want to run a quick build to make sure it compiles and everything. Maybe someday in the future, do something with running tests or whatever. But for right now, we'll just check it with Analyzer and good to go from there. And then our deployment pipeline, let's go ahead and open this, go through some of its components. It's going to trigger on branches main. We are going to exclude, so it won't run if we've done updates to any of our pipeline files or any other of these supporting ones that really don't impact our function. You know, the readme, these ignore files or changes to this VS code uh, settings file. 
if the PR includes changes to any of these files, it actually won't run this because we don't need to go update the function app in any way. Again, we have our pool that we're running against. I do have some variables here with my function app name and my Azure subscription that it's running in. This Azure subscription is actually a service connection out in Azure DevOps for you to deploy. It's not actually the name of the subscription where it's being deployed. In this case, I named them the same just to keep it simple. And in this one, we do have two stages in it. The first one is going to be building and packaging up our files. You might typically maybe want to do this at the end of the PR creation. In this case, since it's just PowerShell and we're just zipping up files, I just have it here in my deployment pipeline. What we're going to do is zip up our root folder here. So that's everything right here. We're going to zip it up all together into a zip file. It's going to give it a name of the build and the build ID just to make it unique. Then we're going to upload this as a pipeline artifact because in our next stage down here, we are going to have it download that pipeline artifact and save it locally onto the build server. And then this is where all the magic happens. We have a task here for our Azure function app to do a deployment, our connected service, our Azure just subscription, which is our variable back up front, our app name. This is a Linux type. It's not Windows. It is flex consumption. Not sure why that would matter, but that was an option here. We have our app name again, a variable, and then we're referencing our package here, which is in our artifact staging directory and our zip file here. Just to quickly summarize, all this is doing is it's zipping up all of our folders here for our function app. And then this next stage down here, it downloads that artifact and then deploys it out using this built in task here. That covers our two pipelines that we're taking a look at. Now let's flip back over to Azure DevOps and take a look at our pipelines there, some other settings, and then we'll go through the process to see what it looks like. Here out in Azure DevOps, we are in the pipeline section here and our two pipelines that we have created already associated with our YAML files in our repository are right here, build validation and deploy. First thing I want to show you is how I incorporate the build validation pipeline here. Let's go into project settings. And we scroll down and go into repositories. This is our repository that we're working with. We'll select it and go into policies. And right down here under policies, we have an option for branch policies. If I select our main branch, which is our default branch and scroll down a little bit more, we have the option of setting a pipeline for build validation, meaning you can validate the code by pre-merging and building on pull request changes. All you do is you just go in here, you select the plus sign, you find that particular pipeline that you want to associate here. What this will do is it will run that pipeline every time you create a pull request, and then you can also configure it with if somebody has to make changes to code that's in that pull request. They push more changes. It will run it again. So this is why I had triggers set to none and everything, because the trigger is actually going to come through this policy setting here. It will go out and run this pipeline whenever we create a pull request. In fact, let's go simulate that right now. I'm going to exit out of here. Now I could go back to Visual Studio Code and make a change there and push that change and everything up. I'm going to just do it right here on the portal for simplicity sake. So let's go back to repos and files. I'm in my JPT Funk social repository. I already have a branch here that I want to work with, just testing the PR process. And let's just go in and find a file that we want to modify. We want to make sure we modify something that is not being ignored. So I'm going to go into one of these folders here. Let's go into the run.ps1. We'll edit it. And literally, I just need to make some kind of change. I'm going to add another pound symbol here to add comment. You know, nothing crazy. So we'll go ahead and commit this, commit to our branch. Now we see very nicely here, it showed that we just made a commit and it's asking us if we want to create a pull request. So we will go ahead and do that. Pretty straightforward. I'll add myself as a reviewer. Let's go ahead and create. Now the cool thing that you'll see here, it has queued up our build validation pipeline because we, we created a pull request on this repository. That was that setting we just took a look at. 
So now if we refresh here just for a second, we can see that that build was successful. Let's actually go and open this up. All right, here we are in that pipeline run. Let's go ahead and go into the job here. We see that it does uh, analyze PowerShell scripts. That's the name of it. And our step here is to run script analyzer. It checked it against our two run files that we have for our two functions. Didn't come out with any issues or warnings there that we would need to fix. That's the point of pull request is to one, have a human review the code, but then also if you can put in any automation like this to test it, run unit test, check for best practices, security issues, anything like that, you can automate all that here inside your pipeline. All right, switching back to our pull request, everything looks good. I'm going to approve it. And then we'll also complete the pull request. We have other options here. We'll just ignore that and complete the pull request. Okay, that is all done merging. So let's quickly go over to pipelines and we're going to see that our now deploy pipeline that is associated is now running. Let's go into it and we'll check its progress out. Right now it's on the build and package. So it's going through and it is going to zip up all of our files and folders that we need to into a zip file and upload that as a pipeline artifact. Okay, our job is now pending. If we expand this out, went through very quickly, it's going to zip our repository and it shows all the files that it included in our zip and then uploaded it. Now, if we go over to our deploy here, it's going through downloading the pipeline artifact, which is our zip file, then going out to our Azure function and doing a deployment there. All right, and that looks like it was successful. Let me click back on it here. And yeah, said it was completely successful and everything, gave us the URL. All right, so everything looks good here. We went through the pull request process. We saw our build validation, which just ran some quick test, completed that, and then our deployment happened. And it is now automatically deployed that out to our function app. So let's actually switch over to our function app. And I wanna show you a couple of things that have changed out there. Okay, here we are out in our function app. Let's go over to deployment. And if you go into deployment center, we see we have some things that have changed here. We now see we have a source and it has automatically updated our function app here to show that it is connected out to a repo in our Azure DevOps. And it gives more information about the name of the project, the repository, we're building off the main branch and that this is coming from Azure pipelines. So this is automatically updated for us here and configured this. And if we ever need to, we can go over to logs and do a quick refresh. Might take it a minute. I did have to clear this out and disconnect it earlier, but typically you would come in here and be able to see those different deployments that have gone and be able to click on them and it would take you back into Azure DevOps in order to see that pipeline run. Just to verify that this worked, let's go back into overview. I believe I did this post. Let's go into here and we can see my double hashtag there just appears. I just wanted to verify that yes, we made that change and it did deploy it out here. All right, so that does it for this video. Just wanted to show you the collaboration things that you can do there, one with a repository and then using pipelines and they should have the ability to deploy out into Azure function apps like this. Again, just centralizing code, enabling collaboration with other people who might be developing Azure Function Apps, and then automating that deployment. If I can get this working with GitHub Actions in the future, I'll definitely do another video for that. But the main idea here is the centralization, the collaboration, and then having pipelines to automatically take care of everything for you. All right, so that does it for this video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.